This is an E46 lock actuator. There are a few key components. This here is the 99 style uh, straight out handle. Uh, this is the exterior handle actuator. This down here is the interior handle actuator. Uh, door lock mechanism. This is where the, the key goes. I took out the white piece. It's missing on this guy. And uh, here is the uh, lock indicator. It's a swing arm that's missing there. So this is a fully assembled unit, or mostly assembled unit. Um, to get to the afflicted piece, it's right in here. And it's probably the only thing you can get you can actually take a, get to in this without uh, destroying it. So there are uh, a few things that make it hard to take it apart. Uh, this rivet here is uh, permanent, so you can't separate this half from this one. And uh, this piece here is pressed on. Now the only difference between this actuator and uh, the newer style is, um, is this piece here. Um, there are some models, like the CI models, I think have a different actuator altogether, but the, the regular models um, are mostly the same as this one. Um, I was only able to find the old style in the junkyard, so I had to fix mine in my 2003. Um, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, so what you can do is uh, there is a screw here and three screws in this. And um, if you take all those off, then that allows you to, to move this, uh, this one piece here, uh, I'll show you the pieces separately later to give you a better idea, but you can move this piece separately uh, over and you can take out all these clips and uh, if you take out the two little washers here and take off this piece, there's a little uh, indent and a pry bar I'll show you on the other one in a second. Um, then if you get it just right, you can pry this apart and once you get it open this far, um, basically you're bending almost along this, this uh, weak point here and you can bend it pretty far and it won't break. Um, and uh, you can get at all the pieces. Uh, the pieces that you're going to need are right in here. I'll show you those in a second on the other unit. Um, and that's all you need to get to to be able to repair a unit. So if you can't find one that matches yours, you can still fix it if you find the part. So this is a taken apart unit. Um, so you can see, I uh, messed up mine a little bit when I took it apart, and there's a lot of stuff that has to work right on this for the car to be safe. So um, you, you really don't want to mess this up, and you want to make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to try this fix. So um, on this one, I just ripped off this piece. Um, I cut it off because it was the old style and it didn't matter, and uh, I drilled out the rivet. So this, this uh, unit is junk, it's garbage but it's great for figuring out how everything worked. So it's actually two separate things that are pretty easy to think, uh, to, to figure out how they work. This is the door latch mechanism. Um, so you can only, uh, it's locked, or the door is closed right now, you can see that. Uh, there's only two inputs to this, three inputs, sorry. Um, there is, this is lock, unlock, so, um, This is locked here, and that's unlocked. This is to open the door, so since it's unlocked now, I can pull this, and that opens the door. Uh, and then this is the exterior door handle, um, which will only open if it's unlocked. You can figure out, you can look at a lot of the mechanisms. It's pretty cool to see how it works. Um, you can look at a lot of the mechanisms and see, uh, see how they work and how they limit when you can open the door and when you can't, and how the locking thing works. Uh, that's down here. This is the lock. All that does is slide that, and um, when you open it, it pushes this this thing. And when it when it's unlocked, that thing will actually catch on the thing below it and allow the door to open. Um, so that's it. that's it for that piece. It's pretty simple. You won't break that. It's it's pretty solid. Um, one one thing that actually can break on this that is broken on this one is uh, the sensor. Uh, so there's a magnet right here. There was a metal piece on top of that. I'm not sure if it still works without that or not, but that fell off. I don't know if it was ever attached before I took it apart. So, um, But other than that, it's, it's all good. So this is where that sensor reads, and it reads whether the car is locked or unlocked, or that door. So um, then this is the rest of the unit. This is the white piece that you need, and this black piece is also important. Um, and it's kind of hard to line that up and get it back in when you're peeling it apart on the like on the other unit But it's not too bad. It's it's doable um, so 
Uh, this is the lock unlock mechanism, and uh, you can see by turning the white piece, you would effectively uh, it'll it'll catch on the black piece at some point and flip that back and forth. And all this does is toggle uh, this piece right here, and that connects in there. Um, then uh, and the lock indicator just goes right on that. Um, this motor is the, the regular lock motor when you lock it from in the car or anything like that. Uh, it'll only use this motor. This motor is the second secure lock thing, and that is when you lock it from the remote and the alarm is activated. Um, what that does is that changes uh, where this, this piece here is, and this linkage, and uh, th there's a black thing that's really hard to see on, on the camera uh, down below that that's a guide for that. So if the door is locked, Right now it's locked, and you go to open it uh, with the interior handle, it needs to unlock the car. So if you're in an accident and your cars are locked or something, you, you can get out of your car quickly if you need to. And uh, that's what I actually broke on mine. And uh, this, this rod had come out of the black guide down there. So, and it was, it was difficult to pop that back in without being able to take it fully apart, but it was doable. So, um, basically, uh, the second locking motor will move this guide over there like that. So then when I pull the interior handle, it won't unlock the car at all. But uh, that's why they say never to activate the alarm um, when there's somebody in the car. But when the, when the secure lock is not active, you can see I pull that handle, the interior handle, a little bit, and it unlocks the car. So um, then uh, as for the part that actually breaks, this is the white piece. This is a good one that I would still use in a car. Uh, as you can see, it's a little rusted here, and there's some cracks and it's starting to go, but this is nothing. This has probably got a few years left in even Michigan weather. So uh, I pulled this out of a car in Michigan, and this was a 99, so this is a pretty old one. But um, you can see here, this is the catch mechanism, and this is the other side, uh, and that just rotates to, to rotate the black thing and toggle. So uh, the magnet is actually uh, a different shape. You can see it's kind of like a, a Z or something. And um, that goes against, there's, there's two uh, hall sensors or something here. I haven't figured out how they work electronically. I, I can't figure out a part number or anything, find a data sheet for them. So I haven't been able to test, to find a way to test to see exactly how bad the white things are, or this one was. But it's all right. Um, so when it's on here, um, straight up is pretty much, uh, there's a magnet in front of both sensors. And um, then when you rotate it, a magnet disappears from one, and and uh, it, it loses some of the magnetic sensors. Uh, this one is for unlock, and this, this one is for lock. And uh, so what happened on mine, I'll put a picture in the post, is uh, the, uh, the magnet rusted. The magnet itself rusted. So, uh, and I mean, that's the only thing that could make the plastic crack like this, because something inside there uh, expanded and rusted. And uh, on the picture of my other magnet, with like the, I pulled the magnet out of this to see if I could swap it, because uh, the, the other replacement one that's actually in my car right now cracked here, but I super glued it. It's strong enough. Um, so uh, I, I wanted to see if I could pull the magnet out, but it just crumbled when I pulled it out, or when I tried to pry it out. So it was, it was pretty far gone. Um, and from the pictures, you can see um, there's probably not anything you can do to fix this, um, sort of getting a new magnet. Um, I tried to sand my magnet down to be close to original size. This entire plastic piece here was gone. I sanded it, and it it was even worse than before I had cleaned anything off. So don't even try to fix it. You, you need a new replacement part for this. So um, so when you put it back together, you got to make sure um, that the this this piece is lined up with that. Um, if you, unless you take the unit all the way apart, it probably won't be too bad. But what you will run into is uh, when you pull this off, this piece here will probably spring all the way forward, all the way to this edge. And uh, this, this can't go on. It's hitting just in here. Uh, you can't really see that too well. Let's see. It's hitting that plastic piece in there, the black piece. And um, so you have to move this just a little bit and then it'll snap all the way in and you can feel that and see that it'll open now and um, that's mostly all there is to it so you, you just peel this back drop this in there drop this and this this part has to cradle the green green thing and when that's in there you can snap snap this all back on if you get it all lined up, it should work, and you have to test. There's a lot of stuff that has to work 
for this to be safe for, in your car. Um, so there, it's pretty interesting all the constraints on this. Um, you can only lock it when the car, when the door is closed. So right now the latch is in the open position, so I can't lock it. Um, if I close this, close the door, it can be either one notch, which is still probably would give you a door open error, or two notches, um, and then you can lock it. Um, normally you can't unlock it by pulling this up. There is uh, a limit switch or a limit limiter right here. Uh, you can kind of do it if you play with it and fiddle it, but you, you don't expect that to work. Um, it only works because there's nothing limiting this motion. It goes really far up. Um, so when it's locked, um, you, you should be able to flip the exterior handle and make sure that will not open the door. Um, then you should be able to uh, pull the interior handle and that should unlock it with their first pull and then it should uh, open the door. Um, and then you can check the exterior actuator and make sure that can, uh, with the door again closed, you can make sure that the actuator will both lock and unlock it. And that's pretty much all you need to test. I wouldn't worry about the electronics. Um, the trickiest the tricky things that you can mess up are this this linkage in here and this because I didn't know what I was doing when I was pulling apart my first one I was going in blind um, but if you know all this stuff you should be able to, to take it apart get that piece out and uh, you can do that on, on the one you get from a junkyard or wherever if you find one and uh, I, it's unfortunate you can't buy just this piece brand new but I mean I, I, this is a pretty safety critical thing to getting out of your car in an accident and if you mess this up you could be in some serious trouble. So I can see why BMW makes this just a whole unit and it's a lot, a lot easier and a lot safer. So uh, that's about it. Cheers.